Okay, so I want to talk about movement, specifically the movement of leaves or the movement of grass. Im imagine there you're sitting in a field or you're looking at grass, right? Just a few blades of grass and the grass is moving. It's swaying to and fro. Now, what causes the grass to move to and fro? It's the wind, or the wind combined with perhaps the stem causes resistance. And so there's some kind of interaction between the wind and the grass blade which causes movement. Now, ultimately, so so then you go back and say, so what's causing the wind? The wind, atmospheric pressures, you know, I'm not a meteorologist, but you know, there's some pressure thing happening in the atmosphere, so there's this movement of air in a certain direction. So, then you can ask what caused the um, air or, you know, how does the air exist? And then you can trace all the way back to the f geological formation of the planet. And you can even talk about how life itself creates some of these atmospheric conditions. The idea I want to convey here is basically that grass that you see in front of you which is swaying to and fro right every single movement every single moment of its movement can be traced to the beginnings of the universe what causes the grass to move in front of you is the big bang when the big bang started it's set in motion an unbroken series of causes and effects all the way you know thirteen and a half billion years ago or whatever and right in that big bang was the momentum the the state was set that in when it happened it will lead to the creation of galaxies, stars, planetary systems, and Earth, and abiogenesis, evolution, the formation of the Earth's geological system, all the way to that point when you are looking at the, at the, all the way to that moment when the grass is moving back and forth. So, so, that's what's happening, right? It's this movement of things through time. Um, causes, effects, causes, effects. Just a complicated uh, interaction. And uh, the most complicated interactions, I suppose, happens in um, our bodies and even the bodies of other mammals. Because inside them, you still still have these same reactions, one thing leading to another, and this is how cells, an individual cell, for instance, each moment of its life, of its existence, every single movement through its structure, every every little thing was. Uh, dictated by events that happened before. So, you know, in my body there are billions and billions of cells and each of those cells are complicated structures and they have their own mechanics. Each single single mechanic, each single moment is um, owes its movement, owes its progression 
owes its capacity to interact in this system, in this colony of cell system. You know, it owes its present state to the Big Bang, right? Um, <clears throat> so that's what happens, you know, that's what we mean by a deterministic universe. So like everything is set in motion and things are going to fall in place like a domino. You know, you see, you, are, you know, you, if you have a huge domino thing and if you push the domino, it's like everything is just going to go. Um, and my thoughts are also a product of this Big Bang. So right now, the, the video that I'm making now is because of the Big Bang. The Big Bang, 13 and a half billion years ago, it was determined that at this point I would be making this video. Um, so, so everything is set in motion. It's going to happen out a certain way. Now, so here is where I want to talk about what what does consciousness mean? See, not everything that moves is conscious. Um, and in the, the an individual cell moves in a certain way, right? I this colony of cells I am also going to move in a certain way so you could say there is similarity between an individual cell moving and me moving because that cells movement is going to impact other cells and so forth and my movement is going to impact other macroscopic objects and possibly even other microscopic objects because I'm a collection of microscopic objects. So <laughs> all of this stuff is happening, right? It's like the universe is just everything is going like clockwork. Everything is just set in motion. And so on that kind of basic level, yeah, everything is just moving and hitting like one domino is hitting another domino. It's just it's just going on. Um but See, a consciousness is a phenomenon that can, you know, it's something that emerges, I hate to use the word emerge, because it uses that emergent property crap, I don't like that phrase, but there has to be a line drawn, right? We're going to identify certain things and say, this is that and this is not that so where does when does something become conscious you know, consciousness is a word the word refers the word has a definition right the word refers to uh, you know well I'm going to def I'll define the word <laughs> though it's going to it's the consciousness is going to refer to something. To me, I can I can see this very clearly. Based on our understanding of evolution, you know, you know, this is where consciousness develops. Consciousness developed in one of these life forms, right? From abiogenesis, these life forms, these cells, and they 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 evolved, and at some point during the evolution of life consciousness came into being so though that's how you can understand consciousness you have to situate it in its origin its origins is in that evolution so and within that evolutionary framework consciousness has a specific function the function of consciousness is to create uh, is to yeah create these things these mammals these creatures these organisms which can have which have this awareness feeling intelligence cognition 
you know all of those things are tied together but it's the feeling right awareness and the feeling come together you know it's basically the same thing you something became aware you know of the environment some kind of awakening of perception of awareness an awareness of its surroundings and that awareness became real because of of the feelings that were created you see it's a feeling which is making things real without the feeling the, there's no awareness you can't have awareness of perception if you cannot feel you know the feeling is not like pain or pleasure you can have a feeling that's can be more complicated like between those two as well but I just don't see how you can perception comes by itself perception awareness and feeling is all tied together it's the feeling which creates the awareness and the perception uh, and an intelligence is a sort of a reflexive process that acts on this feeling awareness awakening and the intelligence simply is responding to the feeling you know it's it's a very very basic so in order for something to be conscious it has to feel it has to feel its environment it has to feel it that's how something becomes real is if you feel it you know um, something isn't real if you just it's there you know you, I can't whenever I see something whenever I hear something whenever I touch something all of my senses are giving me some kind of feeling about it and the feeling and the awareness and the perception they all tie together in this kind of you know it's like an inseparable kind of thing you know uh, you probably have to use a metaphor to describe it because it's hard to dissect it so consciousness is basically feeling the environment you, when you feel it you're aware you, 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 and you're, you're aware of it if you can't feel it then you're not aware that's, the, that's why I would say bacteria and plants and all of these simple uh, cells and stuff they're not going to feel they don't have the capacity to feel you know if you can't feel you can't be conscious that's the basic uh, truth it seems to me I mean when I think about it I can't separate feeling from awareness and perception they all go together um, you know so you get the sight awareness it's, it's, you can, it's, imagine you know just like how does something come into conscious awareness it only comes into conscious awareness if, if it can perceive and perception is a perception is not some empty thing perception is it makes something real and what makes it real is your capacity to feel that it's real and when I say feel it's not like I'm feeling good it's more, it's more like you only know something is real by feeling it you know um, that's how something becomes real it has to be felt and I'm not saying it's like an emotional felt but it's in order for something to be real have substance character weight it's the feeling which creates the substance character weight so consciousness is tied to feelings that's that's the fundamental characteristic of consciousness and awareness and perception are just types of feelings you're aware you you perceive you when you're aware you're feeling the awareness you're not just simply aware it's not some blank aware no you feel the awareness that's how you know that's how you know something exists that's how you know know things is by feeling them that's how I can express uh, that's the best way I can that's the best word I can come up with um, so 
Yeah, and intelligence is basically some kind of a reflexive thing which happens and help. That's just a product of our brain. And you know, intelligence to me is not that complicated, but the feeling is seems to be much more difficult to get your head around. The intelligence is like, oh yeah, okay, just go through various choices and try and. That seems. That doesn't seem that hard. But what what it seems like the trying to get your head around this whole feeling thing that's where it's really quite difficult so to me it's like when something becomes aware when in, in that evolutionary thing when oh when one of these uh collections of cells became aware they only became aware when they began to feel you know um i don't think you can be aware and not feel it doesn't make sense there is no i cannot conceive of awareness without some feeling because a feeling is what creates the awareness like something oh that's real that exists you know you have to feel that kind of um sense that it's there you know um yeah, so that's what I would say what consciousness is. Basically, it's something that anything that can feel is conscious. Um, yeah, that's why I don't like this term, plants can feel, because plants cannot feel in that way. The plants cannot, the plant does not have the awareness, the perception, the feeling of its environment. It's not, to a plant, its environment isn't real. But to a mouse, yeah, its environment is real. Because it can feel its environment. It can sense, not just some it's sensing. No, it can, it can embody it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it can... It's... To a mouse, it, it's real. It's as real as you can get. The feelings make it real, you know. The feelings make reality real. Without the feelings, the reality isn't real. It's just, you know, that's what I, the, that's how it probably is for plants and bacteria. They don't, they don't. For them, there is no reality. They're just bouncing off with each other. You know, they're just dominoes hitting each other. There is no reality for them. But for us. There is this thing called reality because we can feel it. We are conscious. We are aware. For a mouse, yeah, when it's in the, in the dark, when it's hurting for food, and and it mean, can hear sounds and shit, so it it sees, it feels something that's real. You see, it's conscious. It's feeling. It's re it's environment. It's which, which makes it real. You know. Uh, I think I've ranted on for like enough. <sighs> All right, so I'll just yeah, I'll be moving soon, so probably my last for you. <laughs> so in this room, uh, yeah, right, okay.